Hello, everyone. I know it was supposed to be 15 minutes in counting down, but we're going to start just a few minutes early here. All right. So, first things first, uh, my name is Thomas, and if you found this, well, thank you for watching. You either know me or know someone who knows me or you were told to watch this or some something like that. Either way, thank you for watching. Uh, that being said, um, this is going to be some of, uh, hello Mike, some of my uh, artsy blog. So what, blog, blog, I don't even know what they call it this day, streaming, I, I'm, I am not that hip. That being said, what's going down in Flavor Town here is that I was, uh, I was asked if I wouldn't mind doing another one of these streams for someone who is a patron of mine who helps me afford my fine art materials and whatnot. Thank you very much for that, Patty and Mike. Um, to do one where it was scheduled ahead of time and they could show up instead of me just saying, oh, by the way, I did this. I'm sorry, it's over. There's five minutes left because that's not cool. You gotta treat your patrons better than that because they treat you good. So today, one of the things I was looking at drawing was um, something that came up or wolves now, or specifically a wolf. Now I'll be honest here. I am not, uh, I love dogs, I love animals, I love my kitties. Um, I have never really drawn a wolf, but that's okay because we're gonna we're gonna make this happen and we're gonna do it live so that's what we're doing so first things first uh, there's a couple let's let's roll over to my art desk which is amazingly close to my computer desk move over here do, 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 do. move the mic there we go all right so a couple things uh, first things first is tea tea is very important I like tea I drink a lot of tea perhaps too much tea. And hello, Tony and Jessica and Philip and Pierre. It's good to see you all. Uh, Pierre is joining us all the way from Tizzle Lake, Manitoba to listen to me ramble about things. So yeah, tea. Uh, I have tea. Apparently this is, apparently this tea is ready. I don't know. It looks kind of, kind of sketchy to me. Uh, the tea part is very important. Yes. So we're going to pour some tea. It is, uh, uh, wolf spice blend. It's apparently the Victorians used to drink it with uh, gin or rum in the evenings. I'll be having none such intoxicants. It's all be arcane, but uh, tea will happen. Hmm. Hmm. That's some good squishing. All right. So now that I made moisture rings on my desk, let's talk about the art tools. And hello, Patty. All right. So what's going on here today? is like a couple different tools than I normally use. I have, of course, my old my old workhorse. Exactly, Wolf Spice Blend. Uh, this is my old workhorse. Um, it's my glass pen, nothing fancy about it. You don't put any liquid in it. You just, you just put it in the ink and you draw and it happens. Uh, that's gonna become important later. This is a big old graphite crayon. I bought this, not because I needed it, but because it's a huge freaking graphite crayon. And I've been trying to find reasons to use it. I use it a little now and then. I use it sometimes instead of charcoal when I'm doing my blending to make darker shades over things. So put that aside for now. Uh, Q-tips. I must keep the Q-tip company in business with how many I use for shading, but that's fine. Um, important note, cats love these little guys. At least mine do. They will, in fact, if I leave them on my art desk, we'll take them and run with them and play with them, and I will find, like, Little and like little constructs of like forbidden and nook shooks of Q-tips. It's crazy. Uh, that being said, we also have the white charcoal to put over things um, in case they get too dark. And I have my brushes now. I have a couple different brushes here. I have some soft, cheap dollar store brushes. Very nice. Very flexible. Very soft. Very nice. Uh, and then I have these which um, are more akin to a straw broom at this point because they have been mistreated, believe it or not, on purpose. They're stiff, all, this fan brush, which I cut off because it was too large, is stiff all the way up to the end and then it is super soft. Are you guys not hearing me? Hmm. 
One moment, please. Can everyone hear me? Clearly Patty could hear me because she told me to call it Wolf Spice. And hello, Sheila. If you folks can hear me, I would appreciate, okay. Yeah, everybody hears. Okay, great. For some reason, my Facebook doesn't auto scroll when more comments come up, which is super irritating, but whatever. Let me just brush the cat hair off my art paper again, because when I was sleeping, they think that my art paper is like the best place in the whole world to sleep. So, back to brushes. So, so this is incredibly stiff, but I can flick it and it doesn't really move. And the ends are super soft. So, it's kind of like a I think of it like a broom. And then we have this guy who has seen better days. Uh, it's it's kind of stiff. It's it's kind of like dried gross fur. Um, it gets used, it does, for fine tip work when I need a brush because the tip on it's incredibly fine. It just looks absolutely horrendous. Okay, thank you, Mike. Yeah, the, the focus on this camera with the light is weird. I'm trying to get this set up to work properly still. And then there's this thing. So I'm going to have to use a different page. Like that. This is a brush, sort of. Uh, this is a massive water reservoir. Massive. It's, it's a water reservoir. And this little sign on the inside says push. And when you push, what happens is it, it uh, forces water down in. The more you push, the more water goes in, and the more you can dilute your ink. So it's kind of like, uh, kind of like using watercolor, uh, which a lot of people ask if my ink stuff is watercolor sometimes because the way I use it, and it's not. Uh, in addition, I have the bottle that my wife uses to punish our kitties when they're doing bad things, set to mist, and I have tea, which I will now drink. Still good. All right. So now. Having never drawn wolves before, they're, they're not really my thing. Oh, hold on here. Someone talking to me. Hey, Mike. So, as wolves are not really my thing, I sat down and I took this drawing, which I didn't like that I had done. It was, uh, it's totally off center. Um, I talked a little bit the other day about the problem, part, part of the problems I have with proportions of them is being, them being kilted. And it was supposed to be for somebody's fantasy RPG character. And I hate the picture. I do. I really just like it. Ah, thank you, Mike, for pimping my art supplies. I appreciate that. Yes, I do post stuff on there. Um, I find I'm getting more engagement out of my Facebook crew right now. I do try to maintain my Patreon. I had some nerve damage a while back, and I got a little lax on that. I'm getting back into it. So, this were some very base lines of what I thought a wolf would look like. Um, that is not what a wolf looks like, but that's okay. Uh, there were just some basic lines to try to get an idea because I wanted to try something different today. Typically, my art does not involve sharp pointy objects that cut things, but today it does. So what's going to happen here is I'm going to cut up this ridiculous looking wolf thing. And we're just going to kind of make up the lines as we go because they're just a suggestion. And we're going to cut from back here. And what we're doing is making a huge mess with paper instead of ink. It's a nice change. Uh, yes, kitties, I still... Would you stop trying to open the door to the bathroom, you weird little cat? Sorry, my cats know how to open doorknobs. They jump up, and it takes two of them. One of them jumps up, wraps their paws around the knob, grips it, and swings, and the other tries to headbutt the door open. So sometimes they're even successful. All right, so that's... There's my cutout which we then won't use.
Thank you very much, Pierre. I, uh, I'll take a look into that. So what we're here for actually is this. We were looking for the actual obverse, not the not this amazing lifelike wolf cutout. Uh oh, I can see that I got the the. Hold on here, I did something stupid. Boop boop. Oh. Uh, yeah, like I said, the, this particular camera is a hard time with color. If I pull anything too white up close to it, you'll get dark lines through the screen. It's a technical thing I'm working at. So what we're going to do here is we are going to need to weigh that down. I guess that works. Not really. We'll figure it out. So what we're going to do today, instead of typical uh, putting ink down, smearing around, and drawing lines, is we're gonna draw with water today. Which I know sounds strange, but bear with me. This might even be cool. Um, this is something I've done once or twice previous, not a lot. So here we go. Um, I could have traced this, I guess that would have worked, but I didn't, so that's not what we're gonna do. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this in layers. The first layer is going to be a lighter layer and we're going to get progressively darker because I think it's a lot harder to get lighter. Now, I was informed that a certain Miss O'Hara happens to like bright green. So we have some grass green here. It's very nice, very nice, very bright. We'll be using that. And what we're going to do is we... That's really going to bother me if that does that. Hold on, I'm going to bend our paper because... Oh, creepers. That's why it's like that. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is a couple things. The first thing is we want strong lines into the snout, coming down the ear, down the jaw, and down the chest. So let's make some strong lines. How do we do that? Well, first we're going to grab the cat sprayer bottle and make sure it's set to mist, which it is. Great. I'm going to hold this paper down, tie it against the page. Mm -hmm. Which way do we want to do this? Top or bottom? Let's go this way. Uh, don't shift on me. That might be too much water, but hey, live and learn. All right. So now you can see where I had apparently a little bit of something on that, which was bad. That's fine. What we're going to do now is we're going to see how much of this actually took water. Drop the, water, the ink on it. Oop, we're going to chase the ink. Mm -hmm. Ice ink or water on white paper, by the way, is quite exciting, let me tell you. Now the problem is if I spray more water on that at this point, it's just gonna make a bleeding mess. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we're gonna see if we can just sort of guide some of that water around to make more solid lines and to drag some of that in down and through. Where'd you two behave? Thank you. I'm sorry, folks. My cats are being particularly rambunctious. It's like talking to fake internet people. They get really upset. Not that you're all fake to me, but you're fake to them. Throw a little more water on that. Okay. And we'll drop a little more ink. Oh. Hello, Jody. Hello, Aunt Gita. You have to be careful not to put too much ink because it'll, it'll get really dark, like you can see there. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab we're going to grab the fan brush, the old witch's broom here that I have, and we're just going to kind of. Drag some color in through like that. Mm 
You can, I don't know if you can tell at home there, folks, but the bubbling of the paper is very real. Because the white, but what we're going to do is we're going to try to pull most of the color down here. Try to make some fur texture now. Well, kind of, kind of ghostly, kind of ethereal texture, really, more than than actual fur, because that's that's what we're going for here. We'll keep the snout a little darker. I'm gonna have to pick up some of that pool because it's too much water. It's just sitting there. And that's the problem with that. That's fine. What we can do is use this to help thin out the muzzle a little bit. And I guarantee you, you're not getting the uh, the appropriate color of green here listed. But we'll get to it. All right, so, hello Kevin. So we're just gonna try to pull some of the faint, faint, faint green into the white spots. Um, again, this will probably show up better once, once I have it scanned, um, rather than through this camera under this bright light. So there we have an incredibly rough shape of, well, it's supposed to be a wolf. I don't know if it looks like a wolf. What do you guys think? You throw some shade at me, it's okay. Tell me it's poop. I got broad shoulders. I'm just gonna drink some tea. All right. So the bottom part of this is still pretty damp. So I'm just gonna very gingerly soak up the excess because we don't want to lose all of our heart, all of our uh, bright color. And again, I need to figure out how to make the color show up better, the color correctness to the camera, because this is not, I'm looking at, I'm looking at what you guys are watching and it's like, how does that even look like a dog? Well, thank you, Pat. So the next trick, is we wait 24 hours for it to dry. No, I'm kidding. We're not going to wait that long. I couldn't wait that long. Well, I could, but I'm not going to. Um, what we are going to do is we're going to roll the paper, but not directly onto it. And then we're going to do the opposite on the other side. This prevents it from bubbling in places and forces it to, to have a more, at the very least, a more... Uh, even surface distribution because it is so wet. Because there's a lot of cotton in this paper. You got a lot of cotton. And now it's lifting. Hmm. Okay, exciting. Uh, what's this? Well, the problem I have, Patty, with wolves is that I've seen some really good wolf firework. And then there's some other wolf attempts that are. Uh, not to judge other people's art because like that's that's not that's not what I'm about. Um, let's just say it was less than uh, sparkling. But to be fair, if you're doing a Google search of wolves, we're gonna pull up some party plates here now. If you do a uh, Google search of wolves, you'll find majestic forest pack hunters or Herbert Herp on Moon Moon. So you know you t take what you can get, right? Not all wolves are created equal, I guess. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm opening up a package that used to contain perfectly good bowls until my cats put their claws to the side of them. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm still not used to having cats destroying my heart supply. It's fine, Just a couple of bowls bit it, nothing big. I got a bunch. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to throw in some of that grass green. Let's do it right there. Throw some drops of grass green in. And we're going to mix that up with some regular green that I have. They say this is green, but it looks more like turquoise. Hello, Jason. Hello, Natasha. So at this point, we're going to just kind of swirl that around. It's not bad. And what we're going to do is we're going to what we should do is not draw the harsh outline with this. What we should do is gently apply this because if we just use the harsh outline on it, the problem we're going to encounter is that it's going to destroy. I, you guys, again, really can't see, but there's a lot of fine tracery work, and I don't want to ruin that. So we're going to take a soft brush first. No, we're going to take the water brush. If I need to apply more water, I will. And... Uh, I assume a wolf size somewhere around here in that part of its head. So let's very carefully. In in my very brief Google imaging of wolves too, I've noticed they all look like they have mascara on. There's these little black lines around their eyes. They're like Nature's Rocky Makeup Commandos. It's, it's crazy. And we're just going to very carefully pull that out a little. Pull that down like that. All right. So we're going to need to do something about this muzzle and this mouth being open. So let's assume the muzzle starts about there. And if I'm not using appropriate wolf terms for biology, sorry, I'm not a biologist. Sort of wash that out a little, wear that over. Try to drag it down like that. All right, it's not so bad. Can use this at the paint outline. Squeeze some water onto it to wash it out. We don't want it to be too strong. But we do need it to be strong enough right here to correct something that I did. Not that dark though. Well, along with their eyeliner, they also have fantastic wolfy lipstick around the ridges of their mouth, so I'm kind of saved on that. They really are the makeup dog of the predator world, aren't they? And I mean no disrespect by that. It's just that their, their contrast is very striking compared to a lot of other animals. that 
there. Put a little bit of water there to wash that down and out. All right. They do look fabulous. And hello, Chris. Hello, Mark. So, a little bit of fur noise back here. Let that wash out to the end. Go. I choose to think of this as more of a spirit wolf than an actual wolf because as far as I know actual wolves aren't green. But as stated previously, I'm not a biologist. Maybe there are green wolves. I have my doubts though. All right. So now what we have here um, is not a bad base. It doesn't really contrast very, I almost put that in my tea. It doesn't contrast very well uh, on camera, but it uh, doesn't look too bad here. Now, given the amount of water in this, I'm gonna lift that and I'm probably gonna have to go over it again um, with the actual pen. But let's give it a whirl and see how it looks. Uh, 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 yeah, that's what I was afraid was going to happen. That's fine. We'll make that work. Make more stuff work. All right. So now we're going to use this uh, undiluted as sort of the, uh, the outline. A lot of this might only be visible after I scan it. I don't know how much, how dark. Oh, it looks pretty dark there, actually. It's weird that my camera picks up certain types of contrasts, but not others. All right, so we're getting some a little more darkness into the the fur. It's still going to look very ethereal because of the uh, the very watercolory way it was done, but it'll look a little a little more solid. White ones up rolling fresh ones. Yeah, I suppose so. I suppose so. You aren't incorrect in that. It's very important not to put your hand in your artwork. As a young Tom learned repeatedly, smudging over all of his favorite drawings he did. Now, I don't really feel like it's necessary specifically at this point to... Uh, to shape the nose separately with the darker color. Um, I feel like if I did that, if I took and I did an outline of the nose, then the expectation would be that I would outline all of the different areas more so than basic shapes. I don't really think that that's, in this case, really what we're looking for. Like the eye, I'll probably 
do because eyes to me are very striking and very important. Not saying that his little snipper is not important, you know, but even then I'm not going to draw all the eye detailing. It's suggestive rather than, than active. Active, actual. And really, I find, you know, I could draw all the fine little lines to make this look exactly correct. But uh, the suggestion of it, rather than the suggestion of it, sometimes is a lot better to me than the actual lines of it. Because we all see something different then. We all interpret it in our own way. But, again, there's no right or wrong way to do art. I say that all the time, and I, I stand by that. There are ways that sometimes people find it looks better, and that's a matter of personal preference. There we go. See, I find this line here I shouldn't have done because now it's it stands out too much. So what I'll do is I'll drag out that ink as far as I can. To make it look more like uh, movement for texture. Now I'm going to have to do that in a few other places to make it look cohesive to the rest of the drawing. But that's fine. Remember I said about not putting your hand in your heart? Yeah, let's break that rule right now. All right. Wolves are a very interesting animal, and they get a lot of love in media, especially in terms of uh, native culture. Uh, people tend to, to really like them. One thing that uh, people don't typically talk about is uh, the heron, because to certain Canadian natives, the heron, the bird, um, was the bird that brought the souls of the departed to the other side. So it was considered rude or dangerous even to point at them, because after all, you really don't want to be taken to their side prematurely, do you? But people like the uh, the publicized myth, the current publicized mythos of the wolf being the the amazing pack hunter sort of thing. Um, you know what? I know it doesn't look nearly as good on the monitor, but it actually looks pretty okay from where I'm sitting. Um, no, I'm going to avoid that. I was going to darken up in here, but then it's going to look cartoony. Like there's a big chunk. I think leaving it light like that's the right idea. So what we're going to do now is we're going to drink some tea because tea is important. Mm. Now, typically in these sorts of wolfy things, I always see like there's a big moon in the background or something like that. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts? What, do you, what would you like to see? Because what I was kind of thinking is taking a little more water running some happy little trees down along the bottom and making like a little forest. 
because I think at this point, putting in a large mountain or anything big up in this area, up around the, the top, is gonna is gonna take away from the whole motion of it being basically an arrow pointing upwards. What do you guys think? I'll give you a minute, I'll drink some tea. Hmm. We could do some happy little trees. Chris Hunter, I think I think that, that the wolf being a tree that is accidentally shaped like a wolf, or coincidentally. While I like that, I don't think that that is... I'm not going to draw a bunch of little wolf trees. Oh my god, Patty, I am not drawing happy little trees like that. But, <laughs> but good call. All right. So I'm actually going to use the darker green that we mixed um, to do the trees because I can. So first things first, we'll grab this, this dedicated precision tool of wetness. I'm just going just gonna to lay down some water on the bottom of this here page because this is way more controlled than spraying the page. Also, uh, not because they give me kickbacks, but I got this at Art Shack. It was like it was like seven dollars. I found them at Michaels for a pack of six of these things. It was like a hundred and thirty dollars. Like guys, it's a tube with a brush. It's not worth that much. But to quote, uh, oh my, to quote Publius of the Roman of the Romans, everything is worth what its purchaser will pay for it. So now what we're going to do, you can't really see here, I don't think. I'm just going to push this up here. There's a line of water here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to try to drag it up. I'm not going to drag it up with that. Where's my sketchy little brush? Sketchy brush. Ah, sketchy pointy brush. Much better dragging water. I know you guys can't really see this right now, but I assure you it's going to look neat. And I do thank each and every one of you for staying through and watching this. Because really you're spending your time off literally watching ink dry. Why don't you get back up there? You don't get to hang up down there. No, need more water. Some of these bigger trees might not be great, but we're going to try. Because if we don't experiment, we don't find out what works. Not everything you do is going to turn out. Uh, as an example, the dragony guy in like a cowboy or the old tiny shirt and vest I did yesterday, I actually wasn't a big fan of. Some people really liked it. I thought it was kind of junky. It didn't look polished, it had problems, but unless, not everything you do is gonna turn out 100%. That's, that's the reality of it. I had an art teacher once that uh, used to drive me nuts. I'm gonna tell you what he used to do and why I think that this is incredibly detrimental to people. Uh, what he used to do is any drawing that you did, he'd say, draw this, draw that. Okay, that, sure, that's typical art teacher stuff. And then if he didn't like the way you did something, he would take his pen, like his Bic pen, and he would draw 
on on your stuff and say and you would circle stuff and uh thank you michelle i didn't see you sneak in but hello hello justin as well so um what he, what mr keeley would do and that's right bill i'm calling you out um is he would take his pen and he'd circle it. I don't like this. And he'd circle your page like, dude, why are you drawing on my stuff? You told me to draw it. I'm drawing it. I need to be able to make my own mistakes without you doing it. Well, I'm just trying to stop you from doing it. By drawing on my page? Like, come on. This is 20 years ago, and it still infuriates me. Because how are you supposed to build creativity in people if you are literally sucking it out of them? <sighs> okay. Okay, I'm done. I'm done right after. Um, crap. I don't have any eyedroppers, do I? Mm. Mm. Oh, we're going to live dangerously today. We're just going to pour it right on the page. Whoa. It was a little crazy there. I'm happy little trees are a little, little happier than we wanted them to be. But that's okay. We'll just... Uh, we will make it happen. I'm just going to put this under here so this inevitably spills. Yeah, there we go. So it was supposed to happen. It was supposed to go up all that fine tracery I did, but because the ink was so heavy, it, uh, it had other plans. You know, I want to go to the beach. Okay, I need to suck up some of that. It's too much. Jesus, that is still too much. Excuse my language. So for those of you I work with, if you ever wonder why I come to work and my fingers look all colorful, like, like Skittles exploded on them, now you know why. Yeah, my trees didn't turn out there. That's fine. I'm going to pull up some more grass green again. And we're going to throw down some more. Yeah, that was his name. It was uh, it was Bill Keeley. William Keeley. Uh, Craig McGee, one of my friends in high school, on the very last day of school, we saw Mr. Keeley with his fabulous Bob Roth's afro. Uh, drinking from the water fountain and uh being the astute little buggers we were knew his name was william which we belted out see you later bill have a great summer when he had a mouthful of water before he could yell at us and then we ran like l because we were very brave too so here's what we're gonna, we're gonna hold the page and i'm just gonna draw little bits of grass in here that'll probably mix up with the trees a little into the wet parts you know what's going on with this tree whatever yeah happy little trees looks more like little gorgons but you know whatever if you've got some foliage and grass in there a little bit of color deviation color deviation is a big thing in ink, and if you're not mixing it, it's it's really easy to end up with everything being the same color, and that looks kind of gross. So now what I'm going to do is try to pick up that ink again. I hope this still looks something like a forest when we're done. We'll see. Because I don't think it's gonna. Because I think it's too light in some places and too dark in other. Eh. It's not bad. Eh. It's not bad. I don't think it's too bad. Yeah, you know, Mike, I, I got to say, like, if he liked something, he would let you know. And that was good. It wasn't even that he was an ass. It was that he, 
he projected a lot, I found, about what he wanted art to be or not to be. Um, I'm going to see if I can adjust the color settings on this right now. One moment. Doing a lot. Apparently, I cannot set my color contrast. Currently, what well, stuff is going on? Make it darker, brighter. It's not really helpful. All uh, right. There we go. So right there is closer. You don't get a lot of the richness of color. Um, so for Wolf over you know, like a spirity looking wolf thing over a little forest. What do you guys think? I think there could certainly be a lot more detail, but I think as it having it be more suggestion, like more ethereal than actual, you know, hard lines. I don't think I like it's too bad. There are some things I would have done differently, admittedly. The trees I would have done differently um, simply because I don't like the way they was, those turned out. And they had the potential of really making this look dramatic. And instead, not so much. Um, but once it dries more thoroughly, I will post the finished product and you guys will be able to see it. Uh, tomorrow is Wednesday. I may do another one of these Wednesday around three if there is interest in it. Uh, would any of you folks have interest in seeing this? Uh, more, more arty stuff tomorrow around three. And that's three new, I'm going to say New Brunswick time, Pierre, not three your time. To drink this tea. This tea is really good. My only complaint about it is that uh, I spent 47 minutes drawing this and not enough time drinking tea. But when you're working with water, your, your dry times are very short. So if you folks would like to see more of this tomorrow, uh, drop a message. I am going to close this up for now. But I do thank you very much for watching. And if you do want to see more stuff tomorrow, uh, hit me up about just some potential subject matter you'd like to see. And uh, maybe if you want to see more of this water stuff, maybe if you like it, that's great. If you didn't, you prefer my more hardline stuff, that's great too. Let me know. Thanks for coming out, and everybody have a great day. Cheers.